Hey guys, it's Chris. So this is going to be part two of the House of the Undying series. In the first video, we talked about the first set of visions, which I kind of labeled the state of Westeros, which I think were visions to give Danny a idea of what's going on in Westeros, the land she's going to conquer or trying to conquer. So this is going to be the second set of visions. And again, these are all in order from the book. And this is what I call set two of the Undying visions. This is when Danny actually reaches the Undying. They really hammer home the number three here. They give her three visions with three things within each vision. Right before that, she, as she walks in, she hears the whispers and they start labeling her all the things that we've heard her call before, such as Mother of Dragons, Child of Three, Three Heads has the Dragon, Mother of Dragons, Child of Storm. Now real quick before I get into the visions, I think the Child of Storm thing there is important as it relates to some of these other theories about who she is. I did this video, which I'll link in the description below, about the the R plus L equals D theory. And this is not my theory, it's an, actually an older theory, but it's getting some fire online again because it is very interesting to talk about. Essentially, it questions Daenerys' entire birth as far as her being at the Tower of Joy versus Jon Snow. And if that's the case, she wasn't born on Dragonstone where she gained the name Daenerys Stormborn because of the horrible storm they had during her birth when her mother died. If she's in the House of the Undying and all these things seem to be real events in her past, present, and future that she's seeing and they come to pass or their memories that seem to be accurate to her, they called her the child of storm here. All I'm saying here is that if she's in the house of the undying and all these other visions seem to have some truth to them, whether it's a, a memory that seems to be accurate or something prophetic, child of storm, it seems it would be true as well. So anyway, let's get to it. The first one is three fires you must light, one for life and one for death and one to love. Now this is speculative, but I believe I believe the fires refer to literal fires, but they could also obviously be metaphor for something else. Now, most people believe that fire for life be referring to Drogo because obviously she had to burn him in his funeral pyre and that's when she had the magical woman hatched her dragons. But that could also be for death and love because Drogo was a love of hers and that was after his actual death when she put him out of his misery by smothering him with a pillow. I don't see it being all three at the same time, although it's possible. I think these have to be separate things, otherwise it really doesn't mean anything. There's no point in saying it. The one for death may refer to, you know, she having to literally burn somebody or an army perhaps with her dragons and the one for love perhaps is a future literal fire she'll have to set with her dragons or otherwise that she will love because it does say is to love not for love so this could be referring to all kind of things literal fires when she eventually gets across and I believe meets the others and has to use her dragon fire against the others in the war for the dome it can be figurative fires as well so it's still up for speculation feel free to let me know what you think this particular one means but the second group of three reads like this three mounts you must ride one to bed and one to dread and one one to love. Now again, these mounts could be literal mounts that she rides like a horse silver, the one she rode that Drogo gave her as a wedding gift. It could be Drogon. And I think that in fact it's kind of a mix of that and actual possible lovers. The one to bed could simply be in referring to Drogo or perhaps Dario or some future lover perhaps. The one to dread I think probably refers to Drogon because she has actually now ridden him at this point. It kind of reaches back to Valyrian the Black Dread who was one of the three dragons who helped conquer Westeros. And the one for love again is up in the air. I mean what kind of fire does she need to light for love? Is, is it for love of Westeros or kingdom to save it from the others? Is it for love literally as in another person she's going to love in the future? And the final vision in these sets of three in the Undying Vision reads like, Three treasons you will know, one for blood, and once for gold, and once for love. I think uh, I agree with most people with the one for blood would probably be Mira Mazder, which is the witch that she burned at the pyre of Drogo's funeral. She betrayed Danny and killed her son Rago, and for that she burned her, which of course aided in the magical moment where she gave death for life and hatched her dragons. As far as the treason for gold, a lot of people think this could be Jorah, and I'm not necessarily disagreeing with that, but Jorah didn't really betray her for gold. Now, he did betray her to get back to his land, to Westeros. He didn't do it for actual gold, but I, I mean, I guess you could see that as gold in a way because it is land, it's worth money, and it's getting back to the life he knew. In one way, it was treason. It was, you know, he did betray Danny in the sense that he was pretending to look over, but he was actually spying for King's Landing. But at the same time, he then saved her and became a true believer and followed her truly and fell in love with her. He became Captain Friendzone. He was already with her at this point and this was again book two. You still had three books yet to come 
and the TV show wasn't even a thought. And the one for love is really still up in the air. That could be something like his daughter, but she doesn't love his daughter. Although she was going to marry him for the sake of establishing peace in Marine, I don't think that necessarily relates, but it could be some future love that we have yet to, to know of. And that does it for set two of the visions in the House of the Undying. So, so far we've covered set one in the first video, which was the initial set of visions she had as she entered the House of the Undying and went looking for the actual Undying. And then once she reached them, she got these three visions with three things in each vision. So really hammering home this number three, three heads to the dragon. So in the next video, we'll talk about the third set of visions in the House of the Undying, which I refer to as the titles visions. And this is where they give Danny again, three titles. And again, they come in groups of threes. They give her the titles, Daughter of Death, Slayer of Lies and Bride of Fire and I'll explain that in the next video. So thanks for watching. We'll see you in part three.